You may have heard of a catarrh. It's a medical condition in which inflamed membranes in your nose and throat produce excess mucus. Wait. Oh. Wrong notes. In fact, Qatar is a peninsula Arab country whose terrain comprises arid desert and... That might have been too much caffeine. The actual Qatar, K-A-T-A-R, that I'm going to talk about in this video is a weapon from India, as you probably know. Uh, the Sanskrit word is Katara, the Tamil word is Katari, which I've seen translated as either dagger or the word for Kat. The origin is usually said to be the Vij Vij Vijayanagar Empire, I hope I got that right, founded in 1336, which dominated for over 200 years. However, I found an article in which the author traces the earliest depiction of a Qatar back to temple sculptures from the 10th century. By the way, there are even temple sculptures that show fighting with a Qatar in each hand for your dual-wielding rogue needs. Qatars or Kutaras are also mentioned in written sources from the 11th and 12th century. Also, the 19th century Indian scholar Rajendralala Mitra shows a depiction of a Qatar, which is unfortunately not dated, but it does look like quite an early form of it. It's pretty simple. It just has a handle perpendicular to the cutting edge, and it doesn't have the side bars that you normally have on later Qatars. So it seems that Qatar has been around for much longer than you might assume, going by surviving finds, which start generally in the 16th century, from what I can gather. So apparently at least since the 10th, uh, there's a variety of different sizes and shapes. Some are oddly stubby, short and broad. Others have remarkably long and narrow blades. In the late 16th century and after, many Qatars were fitted with European sword blades, and also broken Indian sword blades were refitted as Qatars as well. Uh, there are also examples with wavy blades. Uh, I don't know for sure if these were practical designs or if these had ceremonial purposes. Can be difficult to tell. It seems generally the later ones are less likely to be designed for use. Some have rather strange shapes, like this 18th century Qatar with a blade that bulges outward at the base and has cutouts in it. One of the most unique forms I was able to find is this triple-bladed Qatar from the 16th century. Apparently, they developed the concept of a trident Qatar further. Here's an 18th or 19th century version with expandable side blades. So this is similar to spring-loaded parrying dagger with extendable side blades that you would find in 16th and 17th century Europe. And then in the 19th century, you see a peculiar evolution of this idea, which is the scissor Qatar. You might have seen this before. Some say it's designed to stab an opponent and then deploy the side blades by pressing the handle to open up the wound and do damage to ex internal organs. External organs, I almost said. We're not fighting the tyrant here, I hope. Anyway, some say the center blade was coated in poison, and then the two outer blades that cover it up would protect the user from the poison. That seems more plausible to me than the idea of trying to widen the wound. If you think about it, if the blade enters the body, there's going to be quite a bit of resistance, particularly since we're not made of jello. So if it contacts bones, you're not really going to be able to generate enough force just by pressing the handle and engaging the spring that would force this open. I, I can't really imagine that working too well, and also you might risk getting it stuck. Uh, again, the poison version makes some sense for sure, but on the other hand, I said this came up quite late, and I'm really not sure whether this was ever really intended for actual use in either dueling or on the battlefield. If that's not outlandish enough for you, how about a scissor Qatar with an integrated percussion pistol? In this picture, you can see the hammer above the nipple where you would place a percussion cap to ignite the main powder charge in the barrel. There are other gun guitars, which are personally considered more practical, which have the barrels attached to the sidebars and the triggers within easy reach 
of the handle. Uh, so this would work pretty well, I imagine. It would point naturally because now the barrel is in line with the forearm, which also means that the recoil goes straight back into your arm as opposed to generating muzzle flip. Now, muzzle flip is really only relevant for follow-up shots and you just have one at most. If you fire one barrel first, then you can fire the other. It has come to my attention that, in these dark and trying times, hardly any of you who are subscribed have joined in the battle against the bell. Have you forgotten about the ancient warning? The bell can toll for you if you smash it, now can it? Yes, I'm talking about the notification bell. Because I have one point, what, six million subscribers? And hardly anybody ever sees my videos because YouTube deems it not worthy or something, algorithm things. Or maybe I just make garbage content, but if you don't watch it, you won't find out, right? You gotta test for yourself. You gotta convince yourself of the quality. For that, you need to see it in the first place. So um, hit that bell, that's all I'm saying. It also helps to go on binges, I'm told. If you just watch a bunch of my videos, YouTube is going to keep throwing more of them at you and uh, there's going to be something you enjoy. I mean, I've made so many videos, I've forgotten like 85% of what I've made, but uh, pretty sure there's something for you. Enough talk. Do it. <laughs> like so many other weapons, over time the Qatar developed into a status symbol for the elites and was adorned with fine metal work, engravings, and sometimes even covered in gold. There are also depictions of hunting scenes involving Qatars, including tiger hunting. You can imagine how excessively dangerous such an activity would be, trying to kill an animal as imposing as a tiger with nothing but a melee weapon, and not just that, but even one with such short reach. So it would be a way, a way to show off your courage and fighting prowess. Or just get killed like a dumbass. That's also a possibility. All right, onto the functionality of the design. Unfortunately, Canada is among the countries that have banned push daggers, and this falls under that prohibition the way it's worded. The closest thing I have is uh, this, which is a synthetic practice version of a Chinese deer horn knife. So uh, at least the handle position is right. You just have to use your imagination and pretend there is a blade attached to it. There's one thing, of course, that this design does better than a conventional knife, which is thrusting. You know, straightforward like this, because now everything is aligned with conventional knives or daggers. By the way, if you're wondering what on earth this thing is, it's a, a parrying dagger with a guard removed so I can demonstrate things a little more easily. So if you want to thrust straight forward, if you wanted to do this in a hammer grip, this would not work too well. If you want to thrust straight forward because then you have to overextend your wrist, which puts a lot of strain on it. Uh, there are ways to work around it, either in this uh, hammer grip, you would have to thrust upward or sideways, you know, like throw a hook basically, or you have to change the grip, you know, tilting it forward as much as possible. This way you can angle it a little bit better and you can thrust more effectively. Then, of course, also you have the uh, ice pick grip. So this is also quite effective. Obviously, this is a very uh, effective thrust. Uh, this from, from the sides as well. Upward is rather awkward. Forward is very inefficient. So it all has pros and cons. This is basically the most versatile way. So if I want to stab Creepy Bob over here, I can do it like this, like this, like this. You know, various angles are available this way, but none are perfect. Because right here, if I thrust forward like this, it's technically well aligned, as you can see, but of course there's nothing really preventing this from sliding back other than my grip strength. And if I have a guard, I can push against it, which, you know, if you slam your finger or, or your hand up against the guard with a lot of force, it's not very pleasant. This is more powerful, 
But again, same issue. The limiting factor here is the grip strength because it wants to slide down like this, particularly if you don't have a guard. This, on the other hand, is as biomechanically efficient as it gets. Everything is perfectly aligned. I don't have to flex my wrist in any weird way. I can drive forward, you know, just like a boxer's punch. I can put my body weight into it, drive forward, and thrust very effectively this way. So with a perpendicular handle, this is an extremely powerful attack, better than anything you can do with a dagger in conventional grip. This is also quite powerful. It's basically a hook and an uppercut like this would also be extremely effective, of course. But you're mainly limited to the weapon side. It's like, how are you gonna thrust like this? Uh, you might be able to get get this sort of angle, but this would be rather difficult. So this is not great. And you know, rising thrust from this side doesn't really work too well either. And forget about <laughs> a downward thrust from there is not really happening. Whereas from the right side, you can do that. You can also cut with it. Downward cut from the dominant side, no problem. You know, backhand cut from the opposite side is very easy. Horizontal, obviously rising cut, very powerful. This would technically be very awkward, but because you have a double edge, you can simply do it this way. So with a double edged blade, you have basically all angles available. So the way I see it, the Qatar is simply a more specialized form of dagger. It has less versatility and higher effectiveness for what it does. It allows for exceptionally powerful thrusts and many Qatars have blades with thickened points. Uh, this makes a lot of sense to prevent bending or breaking, especially against armor, but also even in unarmored fighting. I can imagine a very powerful thrust uh, against a thick bone could lead to damage. So reinforcing the tip makes perfect sense. I also want to comment on an older video by Snap Jelly where he argues that Qatars are worse than other daggers. Instead of a blade that goes upwards, I have a blade that goes this way, right? Now, if I punch somebody with that, what is there to prevent the blade from doing this? What prevents this from happening is the shape of the handle. Qatars usually have two smaller handlebars that have a bit of space in between and usually with a pretty pronounced palm swell. So the further, like the wider it is relative to its thickness, the better you're going to be able to resist against such forces. For example, on this dagger, you can see that it turns mostly round at the base here. So if I were to hold on to this and then there's rotational force applied, I'm not really going to be able to hold this very steady. But up here, it's flatter. So this allows me to, I don't like that sound, but <laughs> you get the point. This allows me to hold against it better. You know, same with this, you know, this is a, a fairly thin, flat and wide grip. So I can push against this pretty hard and it doesn't really want to rotate in my hand. Yes, it still has potential to shift sideways, especially if you have a longer blade because the longer the blade, the longer the lever and the more force is going to be applied on you sideways. But of course, uh, conventional sword and dagger grips are not perfect either. Like there's always going to be ways in which things can shift around, in which you can lose your grip or in which your, your wrist can be forced in a direction that is not as strong. Unless the weapon is literally an integral part of your body, like Wolverine claws or cyberware forearm blades, this is always going to be a potential risk to some extent, but it can simply be compensated with proper technique and a good grip. If you look at the tests that they did at Forge and Fire, this also didn't seem to be an issue really. I'd imagine you could improve the stability by attaching straps to the sidebars on top and at the bottom, even though I'm not aware of that ever being done. So clearly it wasn't considered to be a problem. 
The guitar has great potential as an offhand weapon, especially the hooded guitar, which has a guard protecting the back of the hand, and of course also the sidebars cover the forearm. So that means that you're able to deflect an opponent's weapon without really have to without having to worry too much about your hand or your forearm being in danger. Uh, there are still ways they could be targeted, you know, like the inside of the hand could be targeted, things like this. But if you displace out to the side, then the hood is going to cover the back of your hand. And uh, as I said, you could also catch it on the forearm where the bars are. So this would work quite well. By the way, if you like this concept, also check out my video about wrist or forearm mounted weapons. It's linked down below and there's also a card in the upper right corner which you can click. There's an interesting Shaster video demonstration with an axe and guitar where the axe is used to hook and control the opponent's limb or weapon and the guitar is used either offensively or together with the axe to trap and grapple. So that's pretty interesting. Check that out as well. That's about it. I'm sure there's plenty more you could say, but I, that's pretty much all I've got for now. Hope you liked it, found it, you know, entertaining, informative, what have you. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. Vijayanagar Empire. I'm just going to double check how it's pronounced. Just Vijayanagar. <clears throat> Written sources in the 15th, 15th? 11th. Oh. Numbers. Who cares? It's just numbers, right? Nobody's gonna mind if I am off by several hundred years. The Indian scholar Rajendralala Rajan, Raj, Rajendralala Mitra. It's not easy. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm doing what I can here. There are also petitions. The petitions. Petitions. Yeah. I'm going to write a petition against my own brain to minimize such nonsense, but it's probably not going to happen. Mm -hmm.